to create this connection, we want to use something called the bridge tool. So the bridge tool can be found up here. It's got the little two arrows. I'm going to click on it. And it's going to ask us to um, select a first set of edges or faces to bridge. So I'm going to double click on this edge here. Um, and of course, when we double click, we're going to select that edge loop. And I'm going to hit enter. And then I've got to select the second set of edges to bridge. I'm going to double click over here. And our sub D tool should be smart enough to bridge between those two things, which you can see here. And you'll get a few little bridge options. So we can increase the number of segments that are occurring between this bridge. So if I increase this, you see we get more divisions that are occurring in that geometry. Um, we have the option to unjoin them or join them. Um, and then we have the option to change the crease value. Um, sorry, that was me just toggling with the tab key there. Um, I'm sorry, not the crease value, the straightness. So you get like a curvature through the object there. I'm going to go with one segment for this one, um, which you won't see any variation in the straightness here, and I'm just going to hit OK. Uh, and then we've managed to go ahead now and create kind of a nice ribbing effect uh, in our geometry. So I'm going to do a little bit more modeling on this. Um, what I might do is I might go ahead and keep um, extruding out with this guy. So grab that here. And then I might extrude this one up here. And then we could extrude that guy again. Extrude him again. And extrude again like that. And then maybe we want to bridge between these two. Um, pretty sure we can actually just select the faces as well. And use the bridge command through them. So if you don't want to delete those, that's a little bit of a shortcut that will enable you to uh, go and bridge between objects as well. And then you could start, you know, adding even more complexity to this output by trying to uh, potentially extrude away in three dimensions. So maybe what we want to do is pull this guy out here. And then maybe we can go and select that one. And just continuing to, like, slowly extrude and create geometry. Maybe we pull out this way. Like that. and start to create um, really easily um, a bit more of a complex geometrical outcome. And then we can bridge between these guys again. This time I might add a couple of extra segments, like so, to kind of create my ribbed geometry. And I'll keep extruding out here. And sometimes to make the form a little bit more organic, it's good to... Um, you know, add some variation to that guy. I'll extrude that one up here again. And then we could bridge between these two here. I'll make the segments one, just like that. So go ahead and practice some of your um, extruding and bridging together in tandem. See if you can create some kind of ribbed geometry similar to what I've been able to create with those tools. Uh, once you're happy with it, we can start moving on and looking at another tool as well. Maybe I'll bridge this guy here actually just as one last little bridge like that. So we get a nice kind of 3D ribbed effect coming through that object. So now we've got a squash geometry, an unmirrored squash geometry, and a ribbed geometry. And I might just label these. Squashed. Oops, squashed. Oops, not going to let me scale, that's annoying. Ribbed. Cool. And the next geometry we're going to create is splayed.
Actually, one last thing that I might mention about this ribbed geometry is you might have noticed so far in all of our sub-D modeling, we've created only uh, quad faces or faces with four sides, basically. And sometimes in our underlying mesh topology, or sorry, sometimes in our underlying sub-D topology, we want to make use of triangular faces. So say, for example, here, I want to transition uh, to a more smoother kind of turn of this corner rather than getting this hard edge, I might want to create a more triangular element uh, for this little piece here. And I can do that by very simply just selecting that edge there and deleting it. And you'll see I get a much more smoother transition of that uh, geometry coming through there. I might want to do the same up here. So if you're ever looking for a smoother transition of your geometry, just be aware that you can try and use some triangular faces mixed in with the quad or um, four-sided faces in your sub-D modeling. And it's very much about trying to pick and choose uh, the correct moments where you want to actually go ahead and use those triangular faces instead of the quad faces. Um, so just be aware for those more smooth transitions to try and test out some of those triangular faces with this modeling technique.